Hi everyone, today we are looking at the topic water and in this topic today we will look at the distribution of water. As you will see in this topic that there are four major layers um, of earth and we will see how water is distributed in each of those layers and what states uh, water is present in each of those layers. So first up, earth is called a watery planet. Now why do you think so? When you look at this picture, you will see that most of it is blue, most of earth is blue. And why is that the case? Because most of earth is water. You can see that more than 50% of the area of the earth is water and you can only see a little bit of land. So most of earth is water. And as you can see, 70% of the area of the planet is covered with water. Now let's look at the first layer, the biosphere. So as you can see in this diagram, the biosphere consists of all the four spheres as well. So it, the biosphere consists of all the living things and the non-living things present on each of these layers. So what is the biosphere? The biosphere is a system of living things and non-living things in the environment with which they interact. So the biosphere is not uniform because if you go to a different country, you will see that there are different types of animals compared to Australia that are living there. Also, there is different types of plants growing due to the different climates. So on the land, the distribution of planets and animals is determined mainly by climate. So the, climate, the type of climate they're suited to, only those kinds of plants and animals will live there. So the biosphere also consists of water vapour, carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases, which causes the global warming. Now we generally look at carbon dioxide as a bad gas, but it is not a bad gas because of these greenhouse gases, our earth is warm enough to live in. Because if we did not have these gases, the earth's average global temperature will be minus 18 degrees. And that will be way too cold to, for living things or other uh, uh, living organisms to survive. So that's why these greenhouse gases are very important because it causes the global temperature to, uh, of the earth to be suitable to live in. Now let's look at the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere includes all our available water. So in both of the diagrams you can see that the hydrosphere includes everything that is, uh, in, has water in the liquid state. So for example, all the waters in the hydrosphere acts as solvent, carrier or reactant. For example, when you taste the water of the ocean, it will taste a bit salty. And why is that? Because salt is dissolved in the water. So in this case, water is acting as a solvent and a solid is salt that is dissolved in the ocean water. Same with Korea. A lot of plants and animals use water as a transport mechanism to send their seeds to other parts of the land for them to grow. Now, let's look at how the water is distributed in the hydrosphere. So as you can see in this table, water is distributed in as oceans, also as ice caps and glaciers, as well as groundwater and lakes and rivers. So you can see that in the hydrosphere, most of the water is liquid, such as in the oceans, the groundwater and the lakes and river, and only uh, ice caps and glaciers are in the solid form. So let's look at the percentage of water in each of these um, um, each of these parts. So ocean has 97% of water. With ice caps and glaciers, only 1.98% of the water in the hydrosphere is solid. And groundwater only contributes to 0.60% of the water that we use. And with lakes and rivers, it only involves 0.02% of water. So as you can see, in the hydrosphere, the water is distributed in many different ways. But the main thing to get from this table is Water can exist both as solid in the hydrosphere, such as ice caps and glaciers, and it can also um, remain as liquid, such as the oceans, groundwater, and lakes and rivers. Now, the atmosphere can be divided into layers as well. So the first layer is the troposphere. So the troposphere is the uh, layer that is closest to us. So the first layer is our troposphere, which is only about 11 kilometers above the Earth's surface. And all the clouds that we look when we look up in the sky in, is in the, our troposphere. And about 1% of the atmosphere is water vapor. So again, 
uh, one percent of the water that is in the atmosphere exists in the gas form. Water also acts as um, also exists as liquid, such as liquid droplets in the cloud, and it also exists as solids, such as ice crystals, or snow or hail. So again, you can see that in the atmosphere, water exists as all three different states. So first of all, it can exist as water vapor, which is the main constituent in the atmosphere, and that's 1%. And in the gas phase, again, it can exist in a liquid phase, such as droplets in the clouds, and it can also um, exist as solids, such as snow or hail. Now let's look at the lithosphere. Now the lithosphere is the layer of the Earth that consists of mostly rock, as you can see in both of these diagrams. It also involves the lakes, rivers, and oceans. So pure water does not exist in nature. So what happens when it's raining and you collect some water, rainwater, and you measure the pH, you would see that the rainwater is slightly acidic because we know that the pH of neutral water is at seven, but when you measure the pH of a rainwater, it would be around 5.4 to 5.6. And that's because carbon dioxide is dissolved in the rainwater, which causes it to be a bit acidic. Again, ra rainwater is very acidic and it can sometimes dissolve rocks, so it acts as a weathering reagent. For example, calcium carbon carbon carbonate can be dissolved and then it turns out to form limestone. Now this brings us to the end of the theory session. Let's look at some of the questions to test your knowledge. So our first question is, which of the following earth zone contains the most water? So let's look at the, each of the following options. So the first one is the lithosphere. We know that the lithosphere contains mainly of rocks. So again, it won't contain most of the water. So our lithosphere is not the answer. Let's look at part B. Now the biosphere, as you can see in the diagram, the biosphere involves everything. So it involves all the livings and non-living things. Again, it does not contain most of the water in the earth. So biosphere is not the answer as well. Now let's look at atmosphere. Atmosphere only consists of water in three different states. That's true, but it only contains 1% of the water that is available on earth. Then again, atmosphere is not an answer because it does not contain most of the water. So our answer is definitely hydrosphere. And again, as the name suggests, that um, hydro means water. So this is the sphere that is uh, mostly uh, dealing with water. And so the hydrosphere involves all our lakes, rivers, and ocean. And we know that in the hydrosphere, 97% of, of the water is in liquid form, which is available in our ocean. So therefore, our answer would be hydrosphere. Now let's move on to the next uh, question. Our next question is a true or false question. So let's look at if each of the part is whether they are true or false. So the first one is water mainly exists as a gas in the atmosphere. Now this is true because we know 1% of the water in the atmosphere is in the form of water vapor, which is gas. Let's look at B. B tells us water mainly exists as gas in the biological system. Now this is false because we know that our blood is liquid and blood plasma is mainly 90% water. Again, it will be in a liquid form because substances such as oxide, uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide are dissolved in this water as a solvent and carried to other parts of the body. So B will be false because water is again present in the liquid state. What about C? C tells us that less than 10% of the lithosphere is composed of water. And this is true because we know most of the lithosphere is composed of rocks. So again, part C is true. And what about part D? Part D is telling us that living matter consists of 60 to 95% weight per weight of water. Again, this is true. And why is that the case? Because most of our body is water. That's why it's very essential that we drink water or else we will get dehydrated. And, be, and later you would see that water is a very important substance in our body because most of our metabolic reactions occur in water as a solvent. Now let's look at question 13. Question 13 tells you to distinguish between biosphere, lithosphere, hydrosphere, and atmosphere. 
Now again, look at the verb. The verb says distinguish. So this means that you need to find out what are the differences between each of these four different layers. So let's look at the diagram to help us. So the first one is biosphere. As you can see, the biosphere includes everything. So it will include all the living and the non-living parts of the earth. Now let's look at the lithosphere. The lithosphere consists of mostly rocks and hence that would be our definition and you can see that in our um, diagram as well. So the lithosphere consists mostly of rocks. Now what about the hydrosphere? As you can see in the diagram, the hydrosphere is the part, part, of, part of the earth that consists mostly of water. And the atmosphere is the air surrounding the earth. So it involves all the gases and the oxygen that we breathe in, the carbon dioxide that we breathe out, all of that is involved in our atmosphere. Now let's look at question 14. Question 14 tells you to identify the most common state in which water exists on earth. Again look at the verb, the verb is identify. That means that uh, we only need to name which part of the, uh, what is the common state of water on earth and if you can remember the most common state of water on earth is liquid and that is what we found in our ocean and 90% of the water is found in oceans in the liquid state. So therefore the most common state on earth will be liquid. Now let's move on to question 15. Question 15 asks you why earth is sometimes called the watery planet. Now if you can remember the diagram we looked at in at the start of this topic most of the earth was blue in color because most of it was water. And also we learned that about 70% of the area of the earth is covered with water. Hence more than 50% is covered with water. And as a result, the earth is called the watery planet. Now this brings us to the end of this topic. In this topic, we looked at the different layers of the earth and how water is distributed in each of these layers of the earth. Thank you.